The life of an MMORPG is an interesting one. On launch, hundreds of thousands if not millions of players flock to the game to try it out jumping into the servers with their friends or with big time streamers hoping to join up with them, capping out server population and initiating those long queue times that we have all come to expect when an MMO launches. A few weeks go by and well, those numbers have dropped significantly, perhaps cutting it in half if not more. Streamers have moved on to other games and their fans follow them. Players quit because it's just not the MMO for them. And those once maxed out servers are left fractured, making it harder for those who chose to stick around to find players that they need to complete certain objectives. And depending on the game, it's really the beginning of the end, as it continues to just be a slow decline of players. Then come the developers, taking those desolate, low population servers and merging them together to bring new life into it as players once again have people to interact with and team up with to take on various content. Ashes of Creation though, adds a whole new twist to this low population dilemma. One where there isn't exactly a good answer for when solving. When it comes to maintaining healthy populations. Their core idea is that each server has its own story. Each server has the potential to be completely different than one another due to how the node system works, which means that each server is gonna have completely different setups when or if the time comes that that server needs to be merged to maintain a healthy player level. So how do you merge two servers together that could be vastly different when it comes to story progression, city locations, and overall available content? Well, managing not to piss off a population of those two plus servers and making it so it's fair for everybody. Well, Intrepid has actually already answered this in the past and it just doesn't feel like it's the right path for them to take. Yes, we do have a plan in place uh, for how we would want to go about uh, conducting server merges. Uh <laughs> There is something that we would consider a weak and strong server. Um, when we think about pairing servers into those merges, we think about how the populations have progressed at the time the decision gets made to make a server merge, and we would have the weak server merge into the strong server. Um, depending on um, what that means uh, from the player's perspective of things like usernames and the ability to change those names because names are unique on a per server basis, um, there would be an opportunity for players to make name changes who are coming from the weaker server. Um, and then when it comes to land ownership and property ownership, um, the weak server that's merging into the strong server, there's, there's two potentials there. Um, one, it would be a reset on those land ownerships and, and homes for both servers, and, and they would uh, conduct <clears throat> um, the opportunity to, to reestablish their ownership when that merge is complete. Uh, or the alternative, if, if there's a much stronger server, um, then the weak server would be coming in with an opportunity to make uh, that population reacquire those, those, those houses. If a server merge needs to happen, Intrepid plans to merge the lower population servers, aka the weaker server, into a high population or stronger server when available. During this time, if characters have the same name on both servers, the one from the weaker server will be asked to change their name. For those who own property, such as housing or freeholds in the game, if merging a weaker server into a stronger server, the weaker server players will be required to find a new property and unfortunately lose what they had. It is also unknown if Intrepid will even accommodate this loss with gold or something more comparable, but it would really suck if you had a mansion tier of housing that grew from village stage 3 to metropolis and had to give that up for absolutely nothing within your control. Intrepid does in fact plan to limit merges as much as possible though by maintaining character creation throttles and population of servers on launch, hopefully putting off some of the merging needed that will come weeks later. But there is only so much I believe that they can actually do on a launch day. It is something that seems near impossible with the rush of new players jumping into the game that will inevitably fall off, especially when those large streamers and their audiences I mentioned earlier move on to other games. Intrepid could manage the amount of new servers created, but in turn this will cause much longer queue times, when Intrepid has already stated in the past that while they expect server queues, they don't want them to be extremely long waits to get into the game. Which makes sense because this is a good way to ensure that people don't quit before they actually have a chance to play, because server queues are frustrating and any time an MMO launches with server queues, they get raked across the coals on the internet saying that the devs
devs weren't prepared and this and that when inevitably they're trying to maintain those server populations and not put out too many new servers. So as you can see, Intrepid's current plan isn't exactly ideal. What they're intending is really punishing the players sticking around on these smaller population servers, when at launch may have been a thriving world of people that decided not to stick around. And as I've mentioned, there isn't exactly an easy or fair way to fix this without upsetting a solid amount of people, along with potentially losing players who quit the game over loss of long-standing property ownership or things along those lines. The fairest way I think Intrepid could do this, and it could potentially be a better way to handle these system than they're currently planning was some sort of server ending world event that puts server versus server where whomever comes in first gets their server set up as the one that stays when merged. Maybe an apocalypse style mode where the world is ending and players are fighting their way to the divine gateway to escape to a new server, maybe collecting resources or defending points of interest along the way. But keeping some sort of score cross server on top of finding a fair way to balance it so the smaller server isn't at a disadvantage probably probably isn't worth the amount of work it would take. There's also always the option that they could wipe a server clean when they merge it and each side starts fresh on this brand new server, maybe giving some sort of boost when it comes to leveling up nodes so they can get back to where they were faster. But then again, if you're on the larger server, it's going to be really upsetting if you have to be reverted back to the bare bones server and lose all of your property just because a smaller server couldn't maintain your population, even though the server you were on did a much better job at it. So at the end of the day, Intrepid's best solution is probably to just limit the amount of servers they create and accept that you probably aren't going to be able to avoid merges while keeping queue times low. There is inevitably going to be long queue times if they want to solve this issue and not have to merge all of these servers together and cause a lot of upset players in the end, especially as we get later into the game and property is being obtained and things like that. So honestly, if they stay ahead of it, in the weeks after launch, they start moving servers before servers develop too much. It might help alleviate some of that pain of the players, but it's also going to feel like you're moving backwards a bit progressing on this brand new game you just started to play, especially if you're on one of those servers that the population leaves, you get that freehold, and then Intrepid's like, sorry, we're merging this server with someone else. It'd kind of suck. So again, really not a good way for Intrepid to handle any of this, besides doing limited servers and long queue times. Hopefully though, we won't see like WoW classic queue times because well, Intrepid plans to have 10,000 players at least on each server active at one time with potentially 15K to 50,000 available characters that people can log in and play before servers actually full. And that number will scale and probably be lower on launch day and be open up to more players as time goes on. But whether players choose to stick with it or not, Ashes of Creation will still have a massive launch. Everyone who follows MMOs knows about it, and everyone is going to want to give it a try. Unfortunately though, with it being as niche as it is, you will probably see a similar spike and fall as you would with other MMOs such as New World, due to the amount of hype behind the game and the lack of player understanding that follows that hype. And while I don't think people will drop off because of poor design and lack of content like they did with New World, they will drop off because of the time sink it will take and the realization that this may not be the MMO for them. 